All right, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, today, what we're we're gonna fiddle around with here is uh, I bought a, uh, a digital readout for my lathe, and it's a uh, I bought it from an outfit called uh, DRO Pros, and they're local here. They're up in Vacaville, uh, which is I don't know, 30 minutes from here, something like that. Um, the interesting part is that they have a showroom, um, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to check them out, was they had a showroom, and uh, they have a couple machines there that uh, um, they have these DROs on that you can kind of check out. And their prices are excellent. Um, they're actually on eBay, and um, they offer several different models and kits and things like that. Anyway, uh, they're very aggressively marketing these things, and they look like pretty good units. So, um, anyway, I've been uh, missing having a digital readout on the lathe uh, for a while now, and I finally decided to go ahead and do it. Um, so I bought a kit from them for the lathe. Um, they did not have a scale for my uh, Z-axis um, long enough, so they've got it, uh, it's on the way and I'll just pick that up when it comes in. But for now, I'm gonna mount the, uh, um, the X scale, which they did have, and I, uh, I have the box here. And this is the box. And this is a, um, what is this? It's an EL400. So it's a lathe specific. It's got some functions, uh, um, different functions. And uh, it can take uh, up to nine tool offsets, I think, something like that. Um, anyway, I haven't read all the way through the um, through the manual yet, but I played with the unit up uh, in their showroom up there, and I liked it. It's got a metal case, okay, so that was a big plus right out of the gate. It's a die-cast aluminum case, which is kind of nice. It's got a pretty good arm here, uh, so so far so good. It's looking pretty good. So what I decided to do, I've been kind of scoping out the job here and how to mount the scales and stuff. Um, and, um, but I'm going to start with mounting the box because this is really important is where this thing is and how high it is and where you can move it around to and, and how it interacts with the, uh, uh, with the operator on the machine. So I got a pretty good idea and we'll go around to the back of the machine and we'll kind of look at it and uh, uh, I'll show you what my plan is and then uh, we're going to build a bracket to mount this first and then we'll, we'll mount the X scale and route the cables and uh, do all that and, uh, and get it fired up and uh, start using it. Um, the X is the, is the most important one. Uh, why am I holding this? It's not very heavy, but I could set it down, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, the X scale is the, uh, um, I have a Travadile for the Z, so it's actually not that, not that big of a deal that I don't have the Z scale right now. Um, but the X scale is important, and I bought the, uh, the finer resolution uh, one micron scales too. Uh, so this should display in, in ten thousandths of an inch. Um, so it has a, the scale has a one micron resolution anyway for you metric folks. All right, so let's take a look at the lathe, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've been kind of looking at this deal here, and um, what I'm looking at is. Uh, this seems like a pretty good area right in this region here. If I can swing it around, it stays out of the, uh, the plane of the chug. I can push it back out of the way. Um, and so I think what I want to do is create a bracket that mounts this, that mounts to the back side of the machine. And we'll go around and look at that on the back side. Um, it is going to mess with this a little bit, but that's kind of a minor thing. That's just a chuck key. I can find a, another place for that that, uh, that works pretty good there. So. Uh, then I can fold it all the way back out of the way if I want, or I can swing it up to uh, get it a little closer if I need that. And then, um, take that down. This is, uh, this is a scale, and you can see this is pretty, uh, it's a pretty slim scale there. So it's about, I don't know, 3 8, 10 millimeters thick, uh, 3 eighths of an inch roughly and about an inch wide, 25 millimeters wide, something like that. And um, anyway, this is a magnetic scale. And one of the other things that's neat about uh, this particular scale is you can actually, they're user cuttable. So um, um, I can shorten this and, and cut it and then remount the ends and uh, continue on and it doesn't hurt anything. 
So that was another reason. This is not a glass scale, it's a magnetic scale. Um, and uh, so it's user cuttable. So you can actually custom tailor these to your machine, which is, a, um, I think, is an advantage. Uh, if you have a strange configuration or uh, you, the available scales are a little too long or something like that. So uh, anyway, and that's going to mount up here like so. Um, and then this is the cover, and we'll see about that. So I'm still looking at that. I have to figure out a stop for the tailstock and some other things like that. So let's look at the back side, how it's going to mount, and then uh, I'll sketch up a little bracket, and uh, we'll fab up a little bracket. All right, so this is the back side of the lathe here. Um, when I got the machine, it had a, uh, a mount here for a, uh, a light, and uh, so I got a couple of tapped holes already in the machine here, and they look like quarter inch tapped holes. So that's where I'm going to mount my, uh, uh, I'll mount the plate. Then I'll have a stock that comes up with another plate to mount the, uh, uh, the readout box. Um, so what I got to do is I'll measure this angle between here and here, uh, a vertical angle to that, and then uh, I'll make the, uh, um, the bracket uh, so it's basically plumb anyway. So we'll measure that angle. Okay, so here's my uh, chicken sketch here of the uh, DRO box mount. Uh, so we're going to use some... Uh, one by one, uh, one eighth wall tubing, so 25 millimeter by three millimeter wall tubing. And then uh, this will be the mounting plate that goes on the lathe. Uh, this is quarter inch thick by three inches wide, cold rolled. Um, and then I'll cut a piece out for the uh, this upper bracket here that mounts um, the the pivoting bracket for the uh, for the box. So I'm going to cut all this stuff up, and then we'll do some weld assembly. All right, so I, uh, I laid out the angle with my, uh, my protractor here, uh, the 13 degrees, and, um, and then I just bandsawed it on the vertical bandsaw. So that's an example of a real acute angle that you can, um, you know, you can cut anything on a vertical bandsaw, basically. Um, you can't cut these kind of miters on a regular horizontal saw. Um, you just can't. And so your other options are cutting discs and, uh, you know, you could, I suppose you could grind all that off if you wanted to, but that'd be a pain in the neck. So I'm just going to touch that up on the belt sander, and then that'll have my 13 degrees that I want in it. All right, so we're going to mark this bracket here. And um, we're just going to transfer punch this because it's got, it's a cast bracket, and the holes are even cast in the... Uh, in the bracket which is kind of odd um, so I measured them and they're kind of a, a silly number not metric or inch get that lined up and, and then I like to clamp when I uh, when I transfer punch that way uh, I don't have to worry about anything scooting when I uh, when I tap on it, you know Okay, so I got a couple of good, and I never, I never hit these very hard because, you know, all you need is just a little spot, and then you go back with your uh, your regular punch and uh, and give it a good, give it a good lick um, for the drill. These are much harder to sharpen. Uh, you can sharpen them in the lathe, but uh, you know, there's no real reason to whale on these. Uh, you know, and then the ends get all mushroomed and blah blah blah. Right? This is for whaling on. All right, so let's smack a couple of holes in this. Ooh, that drill ain't looking too good, but whatever.
bent to me, but uh, anyway, uh, it's still drills. All right, let's uh, take that out. And, uh, Tap this. So this is a M6 by one. scribe lines on there just so I have some basic lineup but this space is an inch like so and I don't need a lot of clamping here just to hold it in position while I get a good tack going like that So these are just spacers and this is kind of squaring me with the world here. And I'll set the uh, end distances where I want it. And then uh, we'll do a little welding.
test fit here. screws. tighten it up right now. I'm just going to uh, put it on here just kind of see how it swings, you know. Okay. You get the unit. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, once I tighten that up, it'll, uh, it'll sit level. not bad but that's in the uh, that's in the sling plane of the chuck so uh, it would just get covered with oil there so it's probably going to sit something like that most of the time so now I got to figure out a, uh, a place for my chuck key that works um, that's my old chuck key bracket there uh, you know what? I'm gonna do something like that. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna play around with that Anyway, so uh, I'll paint that bracket and uh, then mount it up for good and then uh, run some cables over and uh, get to mounting the, uh, mount the scale. 